I'd like to talk through the tools and equipment that we're going to be using today. The first thing obviously is the art clay. You'll need 20 grams of this. We won't use 20 grams, but you do need to have um, some paste to stick two surfaces together. So you can either make it up out of the remaining 20 grams or you can use some silver paste. It's totally up to you, whatever you happen to have. You need a non-stick surface to work on and also one that eliminates slip if possible. And we're going to use these Teflon squares to roll out on. Um, I'm going to need three for this project. For a roller, you want either a Perspex or a plastic roller. Don't use a wooden roller as clay can stick to that. You need to roll silver clay or copper clay actually if you want to use that and you would use the same amount, about 20 grams uh, for that project. You would have to make your own paste out of that actually because copper art clay doesn't come with paste. When rolling out you need certain depths so I'm going to use these metal clay spacers and I'm going to use the white ones which are one millimeter but if you don't have these one millimeter is equivalent to four playing cards and the 1.5 millimeter is the equivalent to six playing cards. So if you don't have those, playing cards will work just as well. A little pot to store your clay in, an airtight pot is fantastic. Um, you can get little pots from a chemist or you can go to speciality shops, spray a little bit of water in there and then seal and that will keep the clay nice and fresh while you're working and a spritzer bottle. You can buy these very cheaply. Uh, these are a must have. If you haven't got them, in the meantime, you can make do with a little pot of tap water just next to you. I just use tap water in this. It's absolutely fine. Most surfaces need some form of lubrication and you can buy clay balm, badger balm, and um, this pot I think has lasted me about a year and a half. You can see there's still some life in it yet, so one pot will last you a long time. We're also today going to use a template to cut out the shapes. I'm going to use this quick art template, but you can use any template that you want. And to cut out work, you need a metal clay pick or something that has a sharp object. If you don't have this, you could try it with a needle. You could try it with a cocktail stick or a cocktail stick is slightly too too thick um, so if you can buy one of these again it's a tool that will last you forever this one is not traditionally for metal clay it's actually in card making but it has an exceptionally fine point really good for getting in small spaces and i'm going to use that one today or you can use a metal clay pick these are designed specifically for metal clay and you can see they have a really long needle to them, which is very good when you're trying to get into smaller spaces. You may want to use a texture on the back and front of your, of your piece of work. Um, I like to use wallpapers because you can get them in all sorts of different uh, shapes and depths. Or you can use uh, texture mats that you can buy. Stay away from the ones that have a really deep texture like this one. You can see that the texture, you, the camera is really picking that one up. That's because it's really deep here. Clay um, eats into that. So, sorry, the clay will get eaten up by that. So you'll need more clay if you use those. So I would recommend that you use one that has a shallower depth for this project or some wallpaper or another texture that you may have in the house. We're also going to need some sanding sponges. Um, these come in a pack of three and they're three different grits. So they do slightly different jobs. You can buy those from metal clay um, or any DIY shop, but these ones, I particularly like the blue ones. I prefer them over the gray ones. And then lastly, to finish off our project, we're going to use colour using UV resins. Now this is the clear one, but then we have these colours. And I'm going to use these colours today. So we've got black, white, red, blue and yellow. And they can be mixed to form different colours. So that's what I'm going to, to do with those today, hopefully. Um, 
If you don't want to use the coloured resins or resin at all, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to. You could use something called liver of sulphur, which would um, give your piece a patina and it would highlight and give you highlight and low lights on your piece. Um, that, those are all the tools and equipment. So let's get on with the project. So what I'm going to do first is I've positioned my 1.5 spacers on either side of a non-stick Teflon working sheet. So if you're using playing cards, you would have six playing cards on this side and six on this side. And you get your clay out of the packet and you roll it between your hands so it all combines and then there's no uh, cracks or anything on show. Now I'm rolling it out at 1.5 millimetres because what I want to do is I want to have a texture on the back of this piece. So I'm first of all going to roll it out to 1.5. I'm then going to place it on the texture and then change over to one millimetres. So I'm now ready to put my one millimetre spacers on either side and this equates to four playing cards. I'm going to pick up the clay. In this case, I've decided I'm going to use some wallpaper. So I'm going to place the clay on the wallpaper and then I'm going to roll once across the clay. Now, if you do it more than once, if you keep going backwards and forwards, you can get ghosting. It wouldn't really matter on this texture but it's best not to do it and get in the habit not to do it. So there's my texture and that's going to be on the rear of the pendant. So I'm going to place my clay onto the Teflon sheet and this is where I use the um, quick art templates. I'm going to use the smaller one and I'm just going to put that onto the clay. Now what you'll see here, I hope the camera can pick it up, is there are areas here that join the inner design to the outer design. You're not going to be able to go through those to cut this out, so you need to do that afterwards. But let's just cut out the shape first of all. And all I want to do for this, this is going to be the back part. So I just want to cut out the outer edge. And you'll see it's a fairly deep uh, recess here I'm going to try and stick to the outer edge because when I sand this to make it all nice later on I want to make sure that I'm not coming too far into the design so with my balm I'm going to dip my needle tool in just to lubricate it a bit and just take the excess off and then with my needle tool I'm then going to Using the outside edge of the template, I'm going to cut round. So that's gone all the way round now. So if I lift my template up, and you'll see you've got the three areas that haven't cut out. So what I want to do is, just very carefully, I want to go in. It doesn't matter if you go too far out, it's better to go too far out because you can always sand back. There we are, I've joined it up. And then just take off the excess clay. Roll that up. and store in a little pot that's got a tiny spritz of water in it. This is now ready to be set aside to dry. And this will dry for about 20 minutes in an electric oven at a no hotter than 110 degrees. Or you can put it on a radiator, or you can put it in a dehydrator if you have one. Um, again, no hotter than 110, or you can just leave out to dry. Um, if it's a fairly warm room, it will dry, but the longer you leave it, the better it is. So let's put that aside to dry and then we'll work on the piece that we're going to put on top. Okay, so we're now ready to do the top part of the pendant and I've got my clay ready here. 
and again I'm going to roll out to 1.5 millimeters because we want to add a texture so let's roll this out in exactly the same way as we did the bottom just take it around you can see it sometimes does slide a little bit there we are Now for this pendant, I want to have the top to have a design on it, to have a texture on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my one millimeter or four playing cards on either side. And then I'm going to lay my texture that is again is the same wallpaper that I've lubricated, but I'm gonna put it over the top. It's important to put it over the top like that because the depth is going to be determined by your playing cards or your spacers, so you don't roll it too thin. Again, a nice firm roll across the top. Peel back your texture and there you have a nice textured piece. The texture is very, very subtle at this stage, but when it's dry and when it's fired, the texture will really lift and you'll see much more of it. So I'm gonna remove the spaces out of the way and then I want my texture plate again. And this time I'm using the small one again, but I'm going to work on the texture side. So I'm going to dip my needle tool into the balm and just wipe off the excess with my finger. Again, what I want to do is I want to go around the outside edge, but then this time I'm going to cut the circles out and lift them out. And that's a little, it can be a little bit fiddly, so let's see how we get on. So I'm going to cut round the outside edge because this has to sandwich with the other piece that we cut earlier on. I've gone all around the edge now. I'm just going to cool, just going to clean my needle tool a little bit because it's got some clay on it. And now I'm going to go around all the circles and lift them out. It's the lifting out actually that can be tricky. And it might all come out in different parts. There we are. Look, this one's a bit sticky. It doesn't really want to come out very well. Just make sure you don't move your template when you're doing this. So that's the first one. As the clay dries, literally only in a few seconds, it makes a big difference and you'll see that you can get the clay out easier the longer that the clay's had time to sit here in the air. So the first one was more difficult and then it will get a little bit easier. And all these bits that I'm taking out, they're all going to be, they're all silver clay of course, and we're gonna roll them up into a ball and we're going to keep those because we'll make something, maybe the bale for the pendant. So I'm lifting all these pieces out. That was a nice one, that one came out nice, nicely. This is a bit laborious, but the cleaner you get it out now, the less cleaning up you have to do later when you're sanding. Just might go back in that one a bit because I can see it's, there we are. I haven't quite got the edge towards me. It's worth just checking it from all different angles because it might look fine from one angle, but you might find that you need just a little bit of adjustment from another angle. I'm not pressing too hard down on the template. I'm just really holding it in place. Just clean that one up a bit. Okay, 
Now when I lift the template off, I've still got the three areas that need to be joined up. So I'm going to do that now. Again, I'm going to try and keep outside the line rather than inside the line. Because it's easier to take away than it is to add in. And I'm going to take away the excess. And that will be the top part of my pendant. Now, I'm going to concentrate on trying to grab all these little bits because this is the clay that you need to make sure doesn't dry. So you roll it up again nicely. You can see it's just starting to show some cracks. That's where it's just drying out slightly. But quickly put it in your pot that has the spritz of water in it and seal it. We then put this one away to dry in the same way as we did with the others. And I'll come back when both of the pieces are dry and show you how we refine them. Whilst our pendant pieces are drying, it's a perfect opportunity to make a bale that's going to sit on the back of the pendant. For that, you're going to need either some straws cut down to small sizes or a lolly stick or a pencil. Anything that's round will do the job. Um, if you're using a lolly stick or a pencil, you do need to add a little bit of balm to stop the clay from sticking. With uh, straws, I found it's best not to because otherwise the clay slides on it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use this smaller of the straws and that's what's going, our bell is going to go around. So I'm going to get my clay out and this is what I've got left over from the 20 grams. So there's quite a lot there and you can see it's starting to just show some cracks. So I'm going to give it a, a really good hard roll to try and eliminate those. Now because I want a bell shape, I'm going to roll it to a bit of a sausage just to give it a helping hand. And then I'm going to roll, you can see there's a clay or maybe that's where I put my finger, I'm not sure. But we're going to roll out now using our 1.5 spacers. And we're looking for a nice long piece of clay like that. I'm going to texture this because the back of the pendant is textured. So I'm going to swap over to my one millimeter spacers. And I'm going to place my pre-lubricated piece of wallpaper over the top and roll. And you can see this time the spacers are under the wallpaper because I want to ensure that the bale is at least one millimetre thick. You can see how it's squidged out, got longer, which is ideal for what we want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my clay. If you haven't got a clay cutter, um, you can just use a scalpel and a ruler, or you can buy these from Metal Clay. They're sort of, they're, they're grooved and they give you lovely even cuts. Um, I really use these quite a lot and they come in different widths. I think this is half a centimetre, this one, and I really do like that. But you possibly don't have that, so let's use the clay shaper. So you want to just decide how wide your pendant, your bale is going to be. And that's going to be my excess clay. Oops, let's just move this away. There we are. And then, so that you can see, I'm going to cut the other side. And I don't want a particularly chunky bell on this pendant, so that's probably about three quarters of a centimetre, maybe half a centimetre wide. And then I'm going to even the edges out. And even the other side. And I've got a piece there that's about two inches long. Gather up all your extra clay, give it a nice roll quickly and store it. There's an extra bit there. And you can see I've still got a lot of clay left over from the 20 grams. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my straw and I'm just going to 
pick up the edge and then I want to gently lay the veil over the straw so that it's actually sitting on the mat here. So I don't know if you can see here, if I pick it up and show to the camera, you can see that you can see it resting because that's the contact point that you're gonna have with the pendant. So it's really critical that you get a nice overlap under the straw. If your clay is too dry, you may find it cracks as you're putting over the straw. You must lubricate your clay if that happens and then roll and try again. Because if it cracks when it goes over, that will be a weak point after firing. I'm going to cut off the excess now. And if you want, you can do a little bit of shaping to the corners just to give you a nice little added detail. There we are. And that's the pendant, or the bale done for the back of the pendant. You are going to sand the edges, so don't worry too much about getting them perfect at this stage. Okay, so we now have the back and the front piece to our pendant dry. If we look at the back piece first, we can see it's slightly warped. Can you see it's got a slight curve to it here uh, during the drying process? That's absolutely fine and we'll sort that out later. You can also see the little rough edges here, the three edges where we had to, the, the template, we had to use do freehand around there. Not a problem at all. If we get a bit closer, you can see there's the design from the um, texture from the wallpaper we used on the back and it's untextured on the front. Now the reason why I wanted it untextured on the front is when I put the two bits together I want a clear surface to put the UV resin, the coloured resin in those circles. You can have um, a texture on the inside but I just chose not to for this one. You can also see this is the front part now and you can see the texture to the front and on the back, there's no texture. There's no point putting a texture on the bits that you don't see really. Again, you've got the three little marks where you couldn't, where you had to freehand, you couldn't cut out neatly. And if we put the two together, you'll see that they sit nicely one on top of the other. There are some slight areas where they don't meet perfectly, but that's absolutely fine. We'll refine that in a minute. What we need to do first though, is whilst the two pieces are apart, we need to refine the inside of these circles because there are, if I get close to the camera, you can probably see there are little areas that just need, especially on this one here, you can see here where there are little bits that we need to take away because if we don't take them away now, that will be on our finished design. To take them away, I prefer to use for something small like this, some files. You can get sets of files from metal clay. This one's a half round one, so perfect for going inside circles. Or you can cut up some sanding pads and you buy those in a set of three and you can cut them up and you can even cut them into tiny wee little bits to get into those smaller areas. Bit more wieldy to use. They come in three different grits. You've got 800, 1000 and 1500. You'd start with the 800, move to the 15 and then, uh, sorry, the 800, move to the 1000 and then to the 15. Alternatively, you can buy polishing and sanding papers. These can be used wet or dry. They come in various different colors. The green and the black are give more, they're more abrasive and they're good for sanding. The other ones are good for polishing later. Um, if you're going to use these, and they're very good to get into small areas, again, you can cut them down. They come in big sheets. You can cut these down, wrap around a cocktail stick, and use it that way to sand and polish your pieces. So I'm now going to clean the inside of this, and then I'm gonna come back and show you how to join the two pieces together so that we have pendant. 
once you've sanded and refined the inside circles of the top of your pendant, and you can see if I bring it up to the camera, all the little loose bits have now gone. So I'm now ready to join the two pieces. I've got to remember that I've got the texture on the back of the back one and it's smooth on the front. So I want to join them one on top of the other like that. When you've got two pieces of dry clay, the way to join them together is to use a bit of water on one side and paste on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of water on my side of, of my non-stick surface there and get my paste ready. With my finger I'm going to damp, that's a bit too wet, I'm just going to damp around the edges because this is where the clay is going to touch. So I want the clay to receive the dry, the dry clay from the other side. There we are. Don't get it too wet. If you want to put a bit in the middle as well you can because there are areas that are going to touch. But literally you don't, you just put a tiny bit and you can see it's already starting to dry. Don't go too mad with it at this stage. You don't want to wet your entire piece and flood it. I'm now going to put paste on the edges that are going to be joined. Not too much because we don't want to waste clay and we don't want it all to squidge over the side, but enough to give it a bit of a key. So you go all round doing that. If you've got a paintbrush, you can put it on with a paintbrush. Make sure that it, the bristles don't come off though. You don't want one, you don't want bristles all over your piece. They will burn off, but they do actually make a mark. So try and get a, some brushes that don't have bristles that will come off. Okay. I'm going to put my paste to one side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich the two pieces together. Actually, I'll do it this way, I think. So I'm going to put one side on top of the other, pick up the two pieces and just go around marrying up the edges. When they're married up, you'll see that a bit of paste may squidge out between the two sides. That's absolutely fine because we're going to clean that up in a minute. I'm just going around making sure, gently, gently pressing. You can also see that some of the clay has come out on the inside here of the circles. Now we do want to clear that up. So with just a dry paintbrush, go in and take the excess clay away. And don't forget, we're not going to see this part, so don't have to be too particular about that but we are going to see the edges. Now there are some areas that haven't quite married up but that's fine because we'll sand those two together when this is nice and dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going around with a paintbrush and I'm taking the excess off and I'm just going to hold it down there now and I'm just going to apply some gentle pressure for about a minute to ensure that I've got a lovely key and both pieces are attached to each other. That then needs to dry. It needs to go back in your dehydrator or your oven for another 15 to minutes to half an hour or on your radiator or just left out to dry. If you leave it out to dry, you probably need at least another 24 hours. Maybe not quite that long, depends on how hot it is in your house. An airing cupboard's a good place to, to dry things as well. And before you put it away to dry, 
it's a good idea to get a baby wipe at this stage and just go round, wipe round the edges. Now you're introducing a bit more moisture into the clay again. So it's better to do it this, at this stage and later on. You are still going to have to do quite a bit of sanding and maybe even filling in a few of the edges that need filling in where they, don't, they haven't quite joined. We'll fill that in with a bit of paste. But just go all the way around your pendant. And you can see the clay is coming off onto the baby wipe, but it's gentle pressure. And some areas, it's just moving the, the clay from one side to another. And some areas you'll see where the join was quite good in the first place and doesn't need any sanding because it's quite even, the top and the bottom. The seam between the two is already starting to disappear. Now you'd need to do this, once this is dry, you need to sand down the edges, just lightly sand, and then go over with a baby wipe, and then dry again. If you don't need a baby wipe, if this, the edges are looking quite good and you don't feel that a baby wipe is needed, don't use it because each time you use a, a baby wipe, you're introducing moisture, as I just said. So if you can get away with just sanding it and making sure the, the seam disappears, then that's perfect. But a baby wipe really does help to encourage the two sides to cling to each other, moving the clay gently from one side to another. You can see here, Already, there are areas that are starting to disappear. Whenever you join pieces like this, during the firing process where the clay shrinks, they can shrink back a bit and you can see the seam. So it's absolutely critical that you spend some time when joining two pieces like this to get an absolute invisible join between the two. Very occasionally, after firing you'll see it again, the, you'll see the, the space in between again, but the more work you do now, the more it eliminates that potential from happening. So I'm going to carry on working on this for a bit, then I'm going to put it to dry, and then we're going to come back and see the finished piece and we're going to attach the bale to it. My bale is now dry, so I need to refine the edges of it. But if you have a look, you'll see they're a bit raggedy around the edges. So we've got to tidy those up before we attach that to the pendant. So the way to take this off the straw is very gently twist the straw, twist the clay very gently, and it comes out very easily. Now the easiest way to refine the edges is to get a bit of your sanding pad, pop the bale on sideways and very, very gently just move it across. Now you can do it like that or you can do it in a figure of eight. You can already see that the loose edges are coming off. So if we just have a quick look you can see that that's much smoother already. Needs a bit more work, but not much. So let's do that again. Don't hold this too hard. If you squeeze it like that, you'll break it here. So you do need to be fairly gentle with it at this stage and hold it with all round even pressure. Turn it over and do the other side in exactly the same way. If you have taken an edge there on the end of the bale, you need to very gently sand that as well. Support the bottom end on your finger and with your sanding pad, just one way just very, very gently sand the edges there. And do the other side. Now, you don't want any real 
points on your edge on your jewelry that might catch on anything or hurt so run your finger across if you just need to take the edge off just do a sort of a gentle soaring motion there we are and that's actually quite quite nice now so I'd spend a bit more time refining that keep any of the dust that comes off because you can add that to your paste pot don't waste that and then that's ready to go onto your pendant. All the component parts now are dry and we're ready to assemble. So what we need to do is, again, we've got dry and dry clay. So turn the pendant over so that you've got the back there facing you and add a little bit of water to your mat. Again, we're gonna use water to one part and clay to another or paste to another. So with my finger, again, making sure it's just a little bit damp but not wet, I'm going to add some moisture to the pendant where it's going to go. And then on my bale, I'm going to paint on some paste. Probably a little bit too much, but better too much than too little. I'm going to position it on the back of the pendant and just sort of move it around until I'm happy that I've got the, I've got it in a position that I want it. I actually don't want to see the, the bale when I look at the pendant, so I've put it down. If you wanted to see the bale, you can just push it up slightly, making sure that you've still got enough contact points. Now just hold the two together very gently and take away the excess of any paste that may have just squeezed out. And then you need to hold for at least a minute. When you've done that and you're happy that the two pieces are, are firmly attached, you need to leave to dry again. So we now have our final pendant here with the bale attached. The last thing to do is just go over it with a clean, dry paintbrush to remove any tiny bits of dust particles that may be there because of course they will fire to the pendant. And if you have a texture like this one, you can find the dust gets a little bit stuck in the texture. So don't be tempted to blow it because all these bits you can reuse. They fall onto your mat here and you can pop, pop them into your paste pot. So just make sure it's a good clean. When you're really happy that it's clean and there's no dust and it's thoroughly dry, you then need to fire it. You can torch fire art clay silver. You can't torch fire all um, metal clays that are silver. So you do need to look at the instructions. But with art clay silver, you can torch fire. This will take a minimum of four minutes, um, but because of the size of it, I would be tempted to torch fire that for longer. Personally, I prefer to torch fire for longer than, than shorter, and I would torch fire that for about 10 minutes. Similarly, if you're using a gas hob, I would leave that on the hob for 10 minutes. If you're using a kiln, you can fire, um, I usually fire anywhere between 650 and 800 and I usually fire for a minimum of 30 minutes just to give the piece a, a bit of durability. So I'm going to come back and show you the finished piece. So this pendant has now been fired and as you can see it looks really white in colour. Let's show you the back. You can start seeing some of the texture from the wallpaper that I used. And you can see that in the recesses in the circle, there's no texture. Now, to make this look silver, there's several ways of doing it. You can put it into a tumbler or you can use a wire brush, a brass brush, and a bit of washing up liquid with some water. And then just vigorously brush the pendant. And this takes five or ten minutes, but you can already see there 
where I've been brushing it silver and it's removed the white. Now actually what that is, it's when silver clay is fired, the um, molecules stand up and the act of brushing them actually flattens them. So there we are, you can see that. I'm going to carry on brushing that and I'll come back when it's um, all, all clean. Here's the pendant now and it's fully wire brushed and I've been experimenting with colours and you'll have to excuse my nails because you'll see all the colours are all over my nails now. Um, but I found a colour that I really love and it reminds me of strawberries. So I actually tried this and I've cured it under the UV lamp and it's now embedded in there. That's not going to move anywhere. What I have found is if you use too much colour with the clear resin, it doesn't cure. So little is better than, than a lot. Because of the bell on the back here, and I want a flat surface, I've just got some foam, and I cut a hole in the foam, and the bale is going to sit in the foam like that. And that allows me a flat working surface, and also I can transport the pendant to and from the UV lamp. So to get this gorgeous strawberry colour, you want some UV resin in red. This little pile of powder here is Perlex, and this is the misty lavender one. And then I'm going to add it to the clear resin. And I want a couple of good dollops of the clear resin because I want to fill all of the holes without having to mix any more colour um, because I want to make sure that it's all a similar colour. So the first thing is you pick up a really a tiny amount of colour. That is just one single drop from the bottle and that you can see it's a tiny weeny amount that I'm picking up. I'm adding that straight to the clear gel and mixing it in. And you have to mix it well. And I think that's a similar colour to what I had before. So now I'm going to pick up some of the Perlex powder and mix that in. And it just changes the overall colour just a little bit. You get glints and little purple bits showing through. It's a really interesting colour. I really like this. I'm going to carry on mixing this. And if you don't think you've got the right colour, just add more proportions until you get something that you're happy with. Be careful, as I said, of adding too much of the UV colour because that actually can stop it from curing or certainly delays the curing time. Now that's almost mixed. The Perlex powder gives a sort of a swirly effect. There we are. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to add that to all of the recesses in the pendant. So let's start with this little one. It is self-leveling, so you only need to put a small amount and it will spread out. And the more I get in there, the deeper the colour will be. But actually, I, I really like this sort of translucent colour rather than the, the solid colour. I think this gives it a lot of interest. And I'm mixing it each time I go back and pick some up on the toothbrush. Not toothbrush, toothpick. Crikey, you wouldn't want to put this on with a toothbrush. There we are. Okay, each time I'm going back, I'm mixing it again because I want to make sure that I'm getting nice quantities of the, the mixed substance here. 
quite sticky as you can see. What I might do is I might add a little bit more of the Pearl X powder. So a bit further down we get just to give it a bit of gradient of colour. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll have a go. I'm just gently easing it to the edge. I don't want it to go over the top, so I'm not over filling. Now I'm going to add a bit more of the Pearl X powders. Let's see if we can change the overall colour a little bit. Okay, that's nicely mixed, so let's have a go at putting a bit more of that in. We'll put that in the side here. Okay, I'm going to fill the rest of these holes now, and then I'm going to come back and show you the finished pendant before we put it in under the UV lamp. Okay, I've added um, some colour to all of the recesses now. And I don't know if you can see, it's a bit difficult, I don't want to tip this, but by adding more or less of the Perlex, I've got some really interesting different shades of the same colour there. So I think when that's cured, that's going to look gorgeous. What I'm going to do now is I'm on the foam base, I'm going to slide it into the UV lamp. I'm going to turn the UV lamp on and I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be 10 minutes. It does cure in about five, but I think it's probably better to leave it longer than, rather than shorter. So I'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll get this out and see what's happened. So here it. we have the finished pendant and as you can see, the UV resin has worked beautifully. Um, by adding and subtracting the Perlex, you can see how I've managed to get a different range of hues. So they're all sort of, they've got the base strawberry colour, but then some are darker and some are lighter. Really pretty, lovely summer pendant. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see anything that you make. So if you're on Facebook, tag me in any photos, please. I'm Michelle Trapiche of Artisan Alchemy.